Hi, my name is Naki Kingsley Philgrass and I am the founder of the Embassy of Beauty and I thought that today we, I, would share with you my winter skincare routine. It's a time of year that my skin really doesn't like. In fact, it's the time of year where my skin tends to be the worst that it can ever be. Um, I get dry skin, fakey skin. I also have an eczema type skin, so that seems to flare up during this time of year, as well as also being a little bit oily tendency. So my skin tends to be all over the place during this time. So I thought that I would share with you what I do and hopefully it will answer some of your questions. It may make you think that maybe you're using an incorrect product or whatever it may be. Please do let me know if you have any questions and I would be really happy to answer them down below in the comments box. All right, so let's begin. Um, the first thing that's always really, really important is to wash your hands. So at the moment we're doing a lot of that, um, but I think that before you put your hands on your face, you really need to make sure they're all clean because the worst thing that we can do is really rub all of that dirt and bacteria into the skin. Um, it is pretty much the sure way of getting breakouts and irritations and stuff that we really don't want to be having at this time of year, or any time of year for that matter. So what I'm loving and have loved for gosh, I think five years now, um, is this product right here. Um, it's just one of my favorites. This is the English Pear and Freesia hand wash from Jo Malone. I love the scent. I love the scent. But what I also really, really love about it is the fact that it doesn't dry my skin out. Um, we are using a lot of anti at the moment, so this is sort of helping. The next step that I always do is the eye makeup remover. So for that, I always tend to use the Solution Démaquillante pour les yeux. So this is actually a professional bottle because uh, I've been using all of the products from the clinic because otherwise they'll go off. Um, so this is fantastic. It's got two phases in it. One of them is a hydrating phase and the other one is the makeup removing phase. What I love about this product is that it removes any type of mascara. So even the most stubborn of mascaras, which is the waterproof mascaras, um, it removes absolutely everything and then also doesn't irritate the eyes um, and also really hydrates the eye area, which I find really nice and soothing and it also doesn't leave like a horrible film on the eyes which I find like most eye, eye makeup removers do. This is also ophthalmologically tested which means that even for the most sensitive of eyes this isn't going to make you have that weepy eye that we all sometimes get if you are if you do tend to have that sensitivity. I know I do. Um, so if I put a product next to my eye, like if I put concealer or a little bit of foundation too close to my eye area, I tend to my my it my, my uh, eyes tend to weep the whole day, and it's very annoying. Um, so this it won't happen. So it's really simple. All you do is you brush very lightly from the inside to the outside of the eye very gently this is the eye area so it has thinner skin than the rest of your face so just be very gentle so i do that on both sides at this point i usually have koala eyes which is fine I don't mind showing you that and then i wipe underneath and flip upwards so basically what i'm trying to do is just cause as little friction on the thin skin of my eye of my eyelid as humanly possible whilst removing all of the makeup. So that should be now completely removed. So now I'm just gonna flip up this way. I'm probably doing really weird mouth movements with my mouth right now. I always said to do this, it's like, yeah. Sorry, it's just what I do. It's fine. Some of them don't do that on a normal basis even though you guys can all see me right now. Okay, so that should be completely removed. Just gonna check. Yeah, we're good. 
Okay, so step one, complete. Step two is the cleanser. So the cleanser, I am going in between two at the moment. Um, the first one that I'm mainly using because it is cold outside and my skin is dry is the Le EV. So it's this one right here. Um, this one is particularly good because it's got a lot of nourishing lipids. It's got a lot of a big amount of vitamin E in there. It's also really good if you have sensitive skin because it's very gentle on the skin. So if you have eczema or rosacea or psoriasis or any sort of sensitizing conditions like that, this is going to be really really good for you. Um, if you're oily tendency, I wouldn't go for this because it's it does have a little bit of comedogenic. Um, oils in it which are really great because they're nourishing but also they can cause a little bit of a reaction if you do have tend to have uh, more medium to severe oily tendency to your skin and then the other cleansing milk that I'm going for is the Le VIPO2 this one right here so I skip between the two of them depending on my skin and I look at my skin every single time before I do my skincare routine and I think about what it needs. So at the moment, my skin feels a little bit too rough. It's not super smooth. Um, it does, it, it, it could do with softening, which means that I'm gonna go with a lit EV. If I looked at my skin and it was tight and it was dull, then I would go for the Levi IPO2. So it's just about giving your skin what it really needs. So I'm gonna be going for the lit EV right now. Um, so I take about two hazelnut sized amounts, spread it between my hands and I'm going to massage that into my skin. So what I like to do with the cleanser, because people always think that the cleanser is like the least important step to your skincare routine but I actually tend to think that it's actually one of the most important because it's it's the first step to your skincare and it's also the step which prepares your skin to receive all of the other ingredients that you're going to be applying to it so not only does it soften should it soften your skin enough for it to be malleable so that it your skin is able to um, introduce and absorb the next products better into your skin, but also you also want it to remove all of the makeup and all of the impurities that are on your skin. So I think they're very, very important. And I also what what I've also realized is the big change that happened in my life with my skin um, is the the. The difference that I saw um, when I skipped from using a gel or foam cleanser to a milk or balm cleanser. Huge difference. My skin just felt much more hydrated, much less um, tight and flaky because those foam and gel cleansers tend to really strip the skin. So although you get that lovely stripped clean squeaky clean like feeling on your skin it's also stripped a lot of the goodness from it which you don't really want okay so i have now really massaged this into my skin with all the cleansers um i like to keep massaging it into my skin and even leave it on for five minutes or so brush my teeth or something afterwards or whilst it's still on to allow the ingredients to penetrate the skin right because these are really good products and you want to get the most out of them you also want to get the biggest bang for your buck right i mean that you're washing this off so you want it to be um doing as much as it can for your skin okay so that's in um, I go until it becomes gummy and tacky and a little bit sticky, which it is now. So that's good. So now we're going to wash it off and it's cold water. So important. So these are cold formulations and um, 
if you use warm water or you heat up the product too much with it so it's already being heated up quite a bit anyway because you've massaged it into the skin um, and when you're massaging it into the skin it's obviously heating up so the cold formulation is super important and using cold water is super important because these are cold formulations it's sort of like the difference between uh, fresh fruit and canned fruit these aren't preserved these are fresh ingredients and cold formulations so when you add heat to it the ingredient starts to decompose a little bit it changes in its efficiency and i don't want to do that or well, i want to do it as little as as i possibly can so using cold water is gonna keep the integrity of the formulation on my skin which is what i want even though it's cold out there so it's sort of easier to uh, abide by the super cold methodology of BR in the summer or just basically just not in the winter because no one wants to be cold right now. Okay, so one, I just keep rinsing the pad because I want to keep it nice and just like passing over just to make sure it's all off and clean. So I had a little bit of makeup on, so usually one cleanse is enough for me with any of these cleansing milks. Whoops, good one. Um, but if you tend to use or wear thicker makeup, or if you tend to have an oily tendency, it's actually really good to uh, cleanse twice just to make sure all of that, everything is removed and everything is super clean. Okay, eyebrows. There we go. So that is complete. Next step. Okay, next step is the exfoliation. Oh my God, it feels so good to have a freed face. I love it. I love it. Okay, so exfoliation. I'm just getting my pads ready. and um, I'm going between these two. So the Lotion P50W, this one right here. Um, this is the one that I use mainly throughout the year. So it's the gentlest formulation, but it also contains arnica, which makes it soothing. And it also, well, in terms of gentlest formulation, what I mean is that it penetrates the skin slower. That's the difference between how all the formulations work. So the strongest formulation, which is our pure version, penetrates it really fast. And then the P50V is a little slower. And then the P50W is again a little slower. But the destination is always the same. So the effect at the end of it is always going to be the same. The difference of how you would choose which formulation would be good for you is A, the strength, so how the velocity, so how quickly the product's going to penetrate your skin. And that would depend on the thickness of your skin purely that because the thicker your skin is the stronger the formulation needs to be so if you have a keratinized skin or a leathery texture skin because you're out a lot you know if you're riding horses or you're skiing or you're just outside in the elements loving life your skin is going to be a little bit thicker than people who are working at an office every day no wind it's all good slightly more boring but good so um if you are that outside person then the p50 is probably going to be the pure version is probably going to be the one for you and if you're sitting at your desk in an office the w is probably going to be for you or the v so which is why the vast majority of our cells is either the v or the w and i don't actually like giving my customer the p50 pure version because i know that their result is not going to be the best for their skin but that's just i want them to have good results that is my always my plan always my focus so going back to the w so the w is the softest in terms of 
uh, the velocity, but also it has the arnica in there, which is soothing. But it also has salicylic acid, little eensy beensy of it, um, which is why it's really good also if you have an oily tendency or if you have acne, uh, because it helps to kill the inflammation and the bacteria within it. So if you are any of those, then you go for the P50W, which is the one that I usually go for anyway throughout the rest of the year. But in winter, I am dry, I am dehydrated, and I have thicker skin because that's what the weather does to the skin in the winter. It makes it thicker and more keratinized. So the P50V would be better for me at this point. Um, it also has vitamins and minerals within it, which help to hydrate the skin, which is another thing that happens in winter. Your skin gets dehydrated. So that's why at the moment the P50V is my choice. So we're gonna go ahead and apply the P50V. Um, I again use, using the smaller uh, rounded cotton, um, and I'm gonna use a smooth side. And you literally need make three or four drops. So really not a lot. You really don't need a lot. These are valuable, they work, you don't need to be dousing your skin and wasting it, I hate wastage. So I always start, so the idea is pass everywhere once. That's it, you don't need to pass twice. So I always start this area and I work up and out. Don't forget the jawline. And then around the mouth and the lips. It will help your lips to regenerate and not get dry and flaky and chapped and all of that. Your lips have skin, they also need exfoliation. But maybe just do it every other day instead of every day, every evening. You don't need to be doing this every evening. And then we'll do this side of your face. I also tend to also only use my P50 or my exfoliation um, in the evening. I don't use it twice a day. I don't tend to see uh, a point of using it in the morning as well as in the evening and I don't usually recommend to either, especially if it's sunny outside. Even if you wear down my neck, even if you wear SPF, just don't, I just don't like taking the chance of pigmentation. Like prevention with pigmentation is key. For real, I have experienced that. I got, I got the shirt. I got, I got my pigmentation. It's a lot better than it used to be, and I'll come to that later. But yeah, I am not risking that anymore. I am done. I am not using acids on my face in the morning, and you don't need to. You really don't. No, you don't under any circumstances. Okay, so we have removed eye makeup, we've cleansed, we've p 50 Next is the mask. I'm not gonna apply the mask because I applied yesterday and I don't do it every day. Um, but at this time of year, super important because this is what really makes your skin feel super soft and amazing. Um, so I juggle between these two. The first is the mask VIP02. So the mask VIP02 is hydrating, it is energizing, well not energizing, it's oxygenating to the skin, it's bright, therefore brightening, and it's good for pretty much any skin. It's one of the very few products within our line, which no, it's very unlikely that you would suffer any side effects with this product, so it's so safe, um, and it just, your skin just feels like rebirthed after it. Um, whether you're oily, whether you're dry, whether you're dehydrated, whether you're sensitized, whether you're sensitive, whether you're whatever, if you want to hydrate your skin, go for this. It's also really good to mix with other masks to dilute them or to add hydration. It's fantastic. The other mask that I'm using at the moment, but I do be careful with this one because it is very rich, is the mask Visalastine Plus. This one right here. So this is hydrating, but it's also extremely nourishing, which is why if you have any sort of 
oily tendency to your skin, you have to be a little bit careful. When I use the Mask Visualestine Plus, I only leave it on for 10 minutes because I tend to maybe get breakouts if I leave it on for any longer. Um, but if you don't tend to have oily tendency skin and it's just dry and it's just tight and it's just flaky and it's just irritated, this is amazeballs. I have clients who leave this on for an hour. I mean, they put this on, they watch a movie, and they love it. And the skin feels plumped and soft, and just the tightness is gone, and it lasts for days. So um, this is a much, much loved mask if you don't have any oily tendency to your skin. The other mask I wanted to talk to you about very, very quickly, um, I only use this I, because I have an eczema type skin um, just talking about all the products within my arsenal um, because I have a, an eczema type skin this is an absolute saviour the mask creme vernix sorry the creme mask vernix um, so this can either be used as a cream or as a mask um, if you have really really dry skin all day and it's just not letting up Put this on your skin before you go to sleep, use it as a cream, thin layer, you'll wake up and your skin will be soft like bing! It will just, it is much, much loved. It's like we have clients who are absolutely obsessed with this and they just hoard it. Like they will order three or four at a time and just make sure they, they have that backup. You know, it's that product where you just need to have that backup. Um, the way I use it is I tend to get, in the winter when it flares up, I tend to get eczema on my forehead and also underneath my eyebrows um, and I will apply this for five minutes. Right after I pee 50, I will apply it for five minutes, I will brush my teeth, I will do something and this year I have done that and I have not suffered any eczema whatsoever. So uh, yeah, it really is really amazing. It's sort of like a brown texture. Just one warning, it pulls. Like, I think that's also a reason I only put it on for five minutes. So most, the vast majority of my clients, they're just used to it. The ones who love it, they're like, I don't care. There is nothing else that does what this does. But I literally, it smells like off mayonnaise. It, literally, and it doesn't go, it just stays there. So I, uh, I find it a little bit difficult, but I do understand the pros of it and so I have used it and I do use it and I will continue to uh, maybe I use it maybe for my eczema like once a week for five minutes just in this area and then underneath my eyebrows but five minutes is that's you know that's about all I can handle <clears throat> all right so the next step so with the mask you would apply your mask even for however long you want to um, and then you would wash them off with cold water and then you would ceramize. So the serums that I am using at the moment, the quintessential serum, so the first serums that I'm using, is the not yet launched new colostrum serum. So I got a tester of this probably about a year ago now, my first tester. And then they very, very nicely gave me a second tester. Uh, but they still haven't launched it. So I don't want to ask them for a third one and I'm really nervous because I don't think they're going to release this before I'm able to get my hands on it again. Um, it is the first version of the colostrum which I've got here. I've nearly finished this one so I've got my backup of the original colostrum. This was one of my favourite products within the range for hydration because it really hydrates the skin but doesn't leave your skin with any sort of oiliness or congestion or nothing. I mean, it is plumping and hydrating and smoothing, but I've never seen that before with any other product. It's, I was, this is literally probably sells with us as much as, as the P50. It's much loved by many, many people, and I didn't really understand how they could improve this, and I was really nervous about it. And then they gave me the tester, because they saw that I was that nervous about it, maybe, probably, and uh, I, I'm 
shocked, shocked and amazed. This is better, how they made the old colostrum even better, or the current colostrum, should I say, even better is beyond me. Um, but I'll be using this. Um, and then I'm also, which I've nearly finished, I'm using the elastin. So this is available. It's the newest formulation, so it's vegan, no animal product. Um, and it's got, so it's got botanical elastin within, within it as opposed to biological elastin and also lots and lots of hyaluronic acid. So as well as being anti-wrinkle, it's also super hydrating, which is really good at this time of year. So with serums, I'm always asked also which one to apply first. And what I say is thinnest first, thickest last in terms of consistency. If you're not sure of the consistency of your serum, just do a little tester on your hands, plop it on and work it, just work it into your skin, you'll soon figure it out. The thinnest ones, you can mix them all together and apply them and as they get thicker, apply those afterwards because if you put the thicker ones first, the thinner ones will not penetrate and you want the most out of these products, out of any product. By the way, this rule is for any product. It's not just these amazing BR products. So the elastin is thinner, way thinner than the new colostrum. The old colostrum and the elastin are about the same, so you can mix them together, it's fine. Um, so I am going to be applying two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, a bit more. 13, 14. 14 drops to my skin. Again, I'm also asked quite often, like how many drops to apply to your skin. Um, it depends how big or small the surface of your face is. Um, I have a very, very small face. And so I use 14 drops in total of the thin serums. Um, so you really want, what I always look for is, I want my face to feel, well, after I've finished serumizing, um, I want my face to feel a little bit damp, but I don't want it to be dripping. I don't want it to be dripping because it needs to dry by the time I move on to my next product or my next serum. So that's your measure. So try it out and play around with it, you will find your perfect drop amount. Um, but that's really the best advice that I can give. So that is the elastin. Now we're gonna go for the, I like to shake them. Give them a bit of a shake, shake it up. They're natural ingredients. Sometimes they need to be a bit like mixed together. So now for the new colostrum, uh, or not yet launched colostrum, this is a lot thicker. So you'll see when I put it on my forehead, one, two, it, how it stays, and that's because it's a thicker consistency. And then we work that in to the face. Oh my God, this feels amazing. It's like silk on the skin, like, oh. I love this. I am going to be so bummed when that bottle finishes, which will probably be in about a week now. Release it soon, please. Oh, something I forgot to say. The new colostrum that hasn't been launched yet. I keep saying new. It's not new. It hasn't been launched yet. So it's not new, but I don't know whether this will be okay to put around the eyes. The elastin serum, you can. So um, the elastin serum does a double sort of, has a double, double take, no, double act. Um, so you can use it as an anti-wrinkle serum for your face and hydrating as well. Uh, but you can also apply it around your eye area. There are only four serums currently within our range that you can apply around your eye area and they have all been ophthalmologically tested, just like the eye makeup remover. So very safe to put around the eye. I don't quite know about this one yet, but the elastin for show, sure, you can. 
next, so we're still doing serums, but these are slightly different. So these are targeted serums. Um, this is a serum I use probably about half the year. It's probably one of my favorite serums. Uh, I absolutely adore it. So this is called the Serum 3R. I'll show you again. It's gold, so it's a little bit difficult to see. Um, so this, I kind of see it as like the green juice for your skin. So it has lots and lots and lots of antioxidants. It's got tiny little bit of lipids, but just enough like to provide a slip and a little tiny bit of nourishment to the skin and a very little amount also of exfoliants. Um, but it's the more um, brightening type of exfoliant that is in here and I absolutely adore it. So I usually use it in February because that's when my skin is dull. I mean, it literally goes gray. My skin hates February. Out of all the months of the year, it is February. I don't like it. I'm actually usually not here in February, uh, but I'm not allowed to leave the country right now. So I am here. Um, so I use this in February and I also use it at the beginning of each season. So as the season change, I use it because it helps to acclimatize the skin and help to brighten it. And also when I'm sick, if you catch the flu. But if you're a little bit sicky and you're not feeling too well, I don't know if you um, get this as well, but you also, I get my complexion that just seems like dull and gray. Um, this really helps to revitalize that. Um, I always tend to like to apply this to my hands as opposed to on a pad, although you can apply it on a pad. But if you apply it on a pad, you are wasting so much of the product. And I don't like doing that. So um, literally, two spritzes, again, just swipe and press into the skin. Green juice, health kick for the skin, super amazing. Really work that in, press it in. And then down the neck, yes. Okay, and then the very last serum that I use, which is the thickest, is the, oops, Serum Matriciel, oh, is that not, there we go. Serum Matriciel Visage. So this is super hydrating. Again, it's what I want for this time of year, but it's also plumping, which is what most people want. So that's the plumping bit is the peony extract. Love the flower, but also love the ingredient even more. Um, and I, how much of this is really up to you. It comes in a pump and it comes out like a gel. Let me, a little bit more. So it comes out like that. Um, and I, where you would usually get your fillers, basically, uh, that's where I apply it. So I stick my finger in and then I apply it to my cheekbone area, like so. where I want pumping, plumping, pumping up. But it's also really hydrating, so uh, you also have that in mind. Like super hydrating, the content of hyaluronic acid in here is crazy. And then also I love to plump up my labial folds, give a little bit of a massage and get it right in there, right in the folds to really reduce them. This product is the thickest, so it's always, it always actually takes the longest to work into the skin. And then if you have any extra also, I also, actually I don't have any more on my hand, so maybe a little more. I also put it on my forehead, because on the forehead you have two, well, various types of wrinkles. You can have dehydration wrinkles, which means you need to hydrate. Um, or you can have age wrinkles, which means that you need um, ingredients such as elastin or their frown wrinkles, which means you need to plump them up. And plumping them up is this product. Oh yeah. Oh, I love this. Especially at the moment when I'm missing my treatments, my monthly treatments. 
This feels good. It's my favorite time of the day is when I put my skincare on, clean my face. Oh, just love it. Okay, just getting, using up all the products everywhere. All right. The next step is the eye cream. So I love, love this one right here. So this is the Crème Contour des Yeux Biosensible. And this is again for the sensitive eyes. So if you have reactive eyes which tend to tear, this is fantastic. It's also, I find our most hydrating of the formulations for the eye creams so um, it's super hydrating so it gets rid of all of those fine lines that are due to dehydration um, it's really good at depuffing the eye area as well and it also has some sort of anti-aging ingredients in there to help fine lines and wrinkles due to age we have two other eye creams the other one is the creme contour des yeux vipo2 which is really good for dark circles and the third one is the creme contour des yeux lèvres by a fixine, which is mainly for age wrinkles around the eye area and also around the lips. Not on the lips, around the lips, not a lip balm. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and apply that. So, oh no. Oh, pump. Okay, I've, it, too much came out. <laughs> I have way too much, that's for two, like four eyes. So, yeah, okay, with the, I've just divided it into two, I'm not gonna use this much. What a waste. Um, so always use this finger right here. So I've just divided the product onto both fingers and I'm gonna work along the orbital bone, okay? With eye creams, you don't need to go past the orbital bone. The product will migrate. And then we go up, and follow underneath the eyebrows. That's where you wanna go with eye cream. Don't put it on your eyelids. Don't go past your orbital bone. It is not good to do that. That is when some people can get what are called milia. Um, <clears throat> and milia are um, pores which are clogged with product specifically it means that if you have little dots like little raised bumps around your eye area it's mainly because you are using either the wrong product around your eye or you're going going too close to your eye area with that and the reason you use these two dainty fingers is so that you don't apply too much pressure because you don't want to apply pressure in the eye area um this i'm going to use on my on my neck the surplus, because I don't like to waste. Oh, that actually feels really lovely. Wow, never put the cream anywhere else but on my eye before. It feels really silky. Hmm, I might pump a little too much next time too. Yeah, that feels good. All right, the next step. I use this cream, it's my wonder cream just how it is. It's the Grande Crème. So <clears throat> this cream has a really interesting story behind it. When they first launched it, um, it was supposed to be the anti-aging cream behind the brand. And the Crème de la Crème of all anti-aging creams, um, the way that it was explained to me is that, and the way that it works, is that it combats all exogenous aging exogenous not internal which basically means that all of your genetic aging it doesn't touch so it's not going to stop you aging genetically biologically but this is the caveat all of the aging that you have done to yourself which means smoking bad diet too much sun what else is there I guess being out in the elements a lot does harden your skin and therefore makes it lose elasticity. Basically, all of the crap you have put your skin through, or I have put my skin through, this is meant to reverse. Now, when I was told that anti-aging cream, it reverses all of these things, 
too amazing for it to actually happen and work. Didn't believe in it, thought it would be really thick and too nourishing for my skin because I have, like I mentioned, an oily tendency to my skin, so I didn't think that this would be good for it. I thought it would make my skin break out. It blew my mind. It was completely different to what I expected. It is a smooth, buttery texture, which is not comedogenic whatsoever. It penetrates the skin. Let me show you. So that's a little bit of it. I've got some of my, on my nail there. So if I rub that into my skin, oh my God, it's so smooth. I'm wasting it. That's all that's going through my head right now. I'm wasting it on my hand. It's not thick at all. And it's just like a veil. They have done the most amazing work with the consistency of this product. And what's more amazing about it than anything else is that it's, it's not comedogenic, but it doesn't leave your skin. So with creams, I tend to either feel that it by two o'clock has completely gone and my skin starts to get dry and tight by two, or it starts to create this oil and I call it the two o'clock oil shade. Like I just need to pat my skin down or something because oil is just coming out of my pores and then my pores also seem larger. With this, it just stays the same. From when you put it on to when you take it off, it does not budge, not on my skin anyway. It is exactly the same. And it feels almost like a second skin, not oily, not dry, it's really very, very unique, and I absolutely, absolutely adore it. So, yes, I have, this is the cream that I'm going for at the moment, um, and I am absolutely in love with it. But I know that it's pricey. I do understand that. Um, and we have a lot of different products within our range, so, and a lot of different, sorry, creams, within our range so there are plenty and plenty plenty which are much more affordable for you for, for you to choose from i am by no means saying this is the only cream out there we have amazing creams but the reason i also fell in love with it was because it was also the only thing that helped my pigmentation like it says it does all of these things like it plumps it smooths as in anti-wrinkles it hydrates it nourishes it stops glycation, it removes pigmentation, it, like basically anything you can think of, this, this does. And I realized after about a year of using it, um, I had this huge, I mean, you can still kind of see it, but it looked like, it looked bad. Like my husband, when he first saw it, which was when we were on holiday, um, he had actually asked me, as a joke, did anybody just punch you in the face? That's what he, he said to me. I was so annoyed. So annoyed. Um, but yeah, it really lightened it. I haven't used any other anti-pigmentation products on here. Um, I don't tend to like anti-pigmentation products because they tend to be really drying to my skin and my skin is really sensitive it's really reactive and i don't like putting it through that so i just thought okay well I, whatever this is what i'm stuck with it's my fault i stayed in the sun too long i didn't put enough spf on whatever my fault i dig it it's fine but it like totally lightened and when i realized that i was like okay i'm sold this is definitely worth it there are no side effects it's a pleasure to use you're not going to get that crusty look after you've had a laser treatment. I've seen them and then you don't look great after whilst you're going through it. It works though. The laser treatments definitely work. But there is downtime with that. There's no downtime with this. Yes. Okay, and then the very last step. The finishing serum. So we have three different types of finishing serum. I actually go for this one right here. So this is Le Grand Serum, which is sort of the sister to La Grande Creme, but it doesn't do exactly the same thing. So it doesn't um, 
undo exogenous aging concerns. It does not do that, but it does have the most active ingredients within one product within our whole, whole range. This has 99% active ingredients within the formulation. Kind of crazy, kind of crazy. So within it, you have all the amino acids, you have the peptides, you have every single vitamin you could possibly imagine apart from vitamin A because we don't really believe in that within the range. Um, and I tend to only use this serum in December, January, and February. So I don't use it throughout the whole year. Um, I only use it in the winter time because that's the time when my skin needs the most attention. And it also needs that extra layer and that extra shield of protection and nourishment and everything else. So this is like the super green juice for your skin. This is also the best option if you tend to have a comedogenic sorry, an oily tendency to your skin. Um, the oils, there are oils within this product, but they are, they have tended to not make my clients or myself break out. So with the Grand Serum, uh, all of these finishing serums, by the way, are formulated to go on at the, la on the last step. So you literally pat it onto your skin after your cream and you're done. You don't do anything to your skin after you've applied the finishing touch, which is the finishing serum. So for this, I literally spritz one. That's it. For my skin, one. I also don't apply it everywhere. So I like to really concentrate it on the areas which I tend to get dry and rough and maybe even flaky skin, and that is the sides of my face, I guess maybe the sideburns, hmm, don't know, sideburns without the burns, right? So right there, and then right here. Also with this product, if you do tend to break out in any specific areas on your face, don't apply it. Even if you're not breaking out, as you're applying this, it will make you break out. Because it is not because of the oil content, but because of how potent it is in active ingredients. This stuff is potent. It's strong. So wherever you tend to break out, don't apply it. Which is why I never apply it past this point, because my hormonal breakouts, I tend to get right under here, and I'm not going there, not going there. The other area I tend to get very dry and flaky skin is on my forehead. And the eyebrows, don't forget the eyebrows, very important if you tend to have eczema. And then I have very little left, I don't think you can even detect it on the camera. So I just divide that on my two little fingers and then I apply it to my cheeks, but I don't and my nose, but I don't break out on my nose. There we go. And don't apply it to the eye area under any circumstance. Do do, do it, do do it. Okay, that is it for my skincare routine for winter. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention. These products are great for your skin. Your skin is gonna love these products. Your nose, will not be jubilant. It just won't. It's not a lovely sensory experience for your nose. It's a beautiful experience for your skin, but not for your nose. And I like to smell good. I also like to, I don't know, I love scent. So my favorite at the moment, just like to spritz it in the air, is this product right here. So this is the Annie Goutal Petit Cherry. I think this is the limited edition one, but oh my God, do I love this scent. So don't put it on my face or on my chest. Just tend to apply it. Oh my God, it's nearly finished. It is finished. It's finished. Okay. Um, spray it on your pajamas. Um, so it's amazing. It's just so fresh, but sweet. And it's got pear and jasmine and rose and Oh my God, I mean, if I could, if 
if I could bottle it. It's bottled. This is literally a bottle of heaven. I have repurchased this over the years, I think, since I was probably 18 years old. So about two decades, just under two decades. Crazy. I don't think I've ever been so loyal for so long to one product, but I love this. I love it. Well done. And Nikutan. Okay, so that's it for my skincare routine for winter. If you have any questions, please ask. If you have any recommendations for any future videos, please do mention it in the comments box below. And thank you so much for listening. I hope that the lockdown is going as well as possible for you. These are really difficult times and I thought that this would be a really great way of getting closer to you guys because we can't really see you in the clinic at the moment because we're shut. And I wish you all the very, very best and keep safe, keep well, and look after your skin. It makes you feel good. Good night, guys. Bye.